Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I am here with Corinne Le Carré, the plenary speaker for this meeting from the Royal Society Research Professor of Climate Change Science at the University of East Anglia. Wow, that's quite the uh, <laughs> man. It's you know quite the title that you've got there. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Corinne. Thank now, you. Let's get right into it. Corinne, you'll be hosting one of the key plenary talks at this year's meeting. Can you give us a sense of what you'll be talking about? Uh, yes, thank you. So I'm really pleased to be here for one. So what I'm going to talk about today is the interactions between climate change and the carbon cycle. I work really on contemporary climate change, so recent decades and a little bit into the future. But I'm going to try and put this in the context of longer term interactions between the Earth and uh, the climate. So. This is going to include some uh, comments on what we know about the natural environment, but also comments on where we are with tackling climate change mm -hmm. at the policy, uh, climate, climate policy level. Uh, understood. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, that is probably one of the, the greatest challenges of our time, I would say. Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, not excellent, but I'm glad that you're looking yeah. into it. Yeah. Yes. Now, in your experience, how has participating in conferences like Goldschmidt contributed to advancing your work in climate science? Oh, it's been really uh, tremendous, tremendously important to be at such conferences because this is where first, uh, in the run up to the conference, you really bring your thoughts together. Where have I advanced? What, what do I have to say? And then through the interactions, the thinking process, the exchanges with people here, being exposed to other people's work that really influences what I'm going to work about in the next year and the next few years. Incredible. Wow, wow. So it really is beneficial to, to have a meeting of the minds for you specifically, it sounds like. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And those meetings in person are really important. In virtually, uh, they add up as well. Mm -hmm. So a balance of the two is, uh, has been really fruitful, uh, in my opinion. Now, given the importance of your research in influencing climate policy internationally, how do you see events like Goldschmidt helping bridge the gap between scientific research and governmental action, as we were talking about? Uh, the interface between uh, scientists and policymakers is extremely important. Mm -hmm. It's one we're not used to deal with as scientists. It's uncomfortable. We're really clearly out of our comfort zone. Uh, but I've learned to do it uh, through my career. And I like it that I can talk about uh, two scientists of my policy work, which I will do uh, this week at the Goldschmidt uh, conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to encourage people to get out of their comfort zone, to think about what is the implications of their research for climate policy, and to think about what the research they could do themselves to inform climate policy in the future. Incredible. It's funny that you say you'd be uncomfortable with that because I think politicians would probably be uncomfortable trying to understand the science of it. So it might be, you know, two sides yeah. of the same coin. Yeah, there is a middle ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Let's hope yes, we can find yes. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of policy, do you notice any changes uh, because the um, we currently in Chicago is the National Democratic Convention? Is there any yeah. kind of layover or uh, overlap for you with that? Well, uh, there's no direct overlap with the Democratic Convention, uh, but there is, uh, I mean, the climate research community and the geophysical research community has been tremendously successful in uh, synthesizing uh, the common knowledge for delivery of support to policy making. I mean, climate policy is really extremely well developed. Uh, policymakers take it very seriously. This is actually one of the messages that I will be uh, saying in my talk is that I don't want to hear anymore, nothing is happening about climate change. There is a lot of things happening about climate change. There is a lot of demand for sound scientific information. And I think the climate, uh, the scientific community, as wide as it is, steps up to the challenge.